The perfect camera doesn't have to be so hard. It's not the Ark of the Covenant. We shouldn't have to be diving into dungeons with gold and like spiders. It shouldn't be this lost ancient relic where we have to go through a maze and there's arrows triggered booby traps everywhere and you have to, when you find the camera, you have to have a bag of sand that weighs exactly the same and then you replace it and then you run like Indiana Jones would did. So today we lay the blueprint of what the perfect camera should be so I can stop getting stupid suggestions from you freaks like the Osmo Pocket where you can't even replace the battery. Once the battery dies, vlog over. Sorry for not saying goodbye. So to be a perfect camera, you must have these features or we dare not speak your name. Let's get into it. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So what I've realized on my quest is that you probably can't have one perfect camera for the studio and to vlog with outside. It's not gonna happen. So I will do a separate video on my wish list for the Fuji action camera. We'll do that separately. So we need a daily vlog driver that you can just throw in a pocket, catch anything anytime. And then sometimes you want to step it up a cinematic notch and you bring the G85 with you with its amazing 24 megabits per second footage that can't be topped. When it comes to sensor size, I used to think it had to be full frame, but from what I've seen, at least with the Canon EOS R, I did a video the other day where I filmed with every camera I had, and I filmed with this one first, that looked the worst, then the GH5S looked better, then the Samsung looked better even. So it's like, sensor size is all over the map. You don't need a full frame sensor. It would be nice if it actually worked. What is this? What's in there? Atari pieces. From what I've seen, the APS-C seems to be the sweet spot. The Fuji struck magic. Samsung made a gold. Full frame, not necessary. Micro Four Thirds, nice to be light for outside, but APS-C is magic. That might be the sweet spot. I'm open to even a one inch sensor being perfect for outside, but in the studio, Micro Four Thirds to APS-C is where we're needing to be. A studio camera doesn't really need to be light, but eventually you're gonna wanna carry this thing around and shoot something outside, so lightness plays a factor. The lighter the better. If we can shrink down our technology, I'd be happy. I shrunk down my technology. It... So let's talk about the features that we need. And the first, one of the most important things is exposure, and it has to be automatic. There's no variable ND tweaking every time a cloud passes by. This has to be out of your mind or else all you'll think about. <laughs> Every time I watch a potato jet video, he's like, oh, the cloud went by. So ideally what we have is face detection autofocus combined with that autofocus is also the exposure meter. So whatever's in focus is exposed perfectly. And we should be able to set maybe even a custom, like you set up the video, like, okay, this is perfect exposure right now. How my face is, how the sky is, and you take a picture of that and then it tries to replicate that no matter what situation, even if you're in the shade. Somehow it's like, this is what your goal is. This exposure, my face like that, sky like that. Just give me more options. Just never clip my face. And then maybe like, okay, never put the sky past a 80% zebra zone. Something like that, like never. And then if you're in the shade, it's like, okay, HDR technology kicking in, but not like red face. Fuji style HDR. What the hell was that? The changes should be smooth as well and quick, not stepping. Fuji has some stepping shit. The real key for good exposure is having good dynamic range on your sensor. So I hate crushed blacks and too bright whites. It's just irritating. I want smooth, just pleasing image, calm, just wood, wood everywhere. So there has to be a log profile, and there should be an extra log, even more. Put an extra log on that fire. Just, I want the dynamic range of a cinema camera in a tiny body. That's not too much to ask. You're too much to ask on a date. When it comes to autofocus, just work. Just, like, we're already there. We have the technology, Canon. It works. So face and preferably eye detect autofocus, not ear detection like the Samsung. I notice that every time it's all focused on the ears, you singing bunch of happy bitches. I also want to be able to register my face in many different emotional states. So like I take pictures like, 
like just everything. And so you know this face and you, this is the one you prioritize, not anyone else in the crowd. Don't look at them. You've seen this face do everything it needs to do. Learn who I am. I'm a human boy. Get to know me and you'll find that we can be friends. Also, there has to be a limiter. Don't ever go past two feet. There has to be a little switch and it should be quick. And I should be able to turn it off if I want to show something in the background. A quick little flip on the back side, right on the front. <laughs> and it should just never go. Like Panasonic's main problem is sometimes it'll latch onto the background. That shouldn't even be an option. Just let me limit it right here. Don't ever do this. When it comes to the flippy screen, I don't care if it's out to the side or up to the top. Surprise me, do something different, not the bottom. That's where my tripod should be. Unless it's so small that it doesn't need the tripod, then bottom might move. I've thought a lot about this, the size of the screen. The Fuji X-T200 was so glorious. 3.5 inches, 2.7 megapixels. That's fantastic. It might even be too good. It was so good that I was looking at it. I was like, wow, look at that. So maybe you bring it down to 3.2 inch, but I did like it. I just, I might regret it. Initially, I wanted the four incher, but I think there's too much. You just really need to see what's happening. Judge exposure and focus, you're good. But the resolution is what has to be high. Sony has the worst screens ever. It's like one megapixel. And then we got 1.5 on the GH5S. Eh, it's okay, but you get up into the two and above, that's good times. It also should be a very accurate touch screen. The best I've ever seen, hands down, Canon EOS R. Just, I don't know what the hell you did. Let's just say this. This is the dumbest screen I've ever seen. I have gloves, they're merino wool with a special tip that should work on anything. Barely registers. I have to take my glove off in the freezing cold and then it works. Whereas on this, I can have my rubber workout gloves that wouldn't touch a damn thing over here. It works fine on this. What a great screen. It's so accurate and perfect. And let me customize what's on the screen. Canon has a quick menu, but there's a bunch of stuff on there like headphone volume meter. Who gives a shit? Let me choose and pick and I just want like mic jack. I don't even know what I want. I should be able to choose every single feature that's in the camera and put it up there if I want it. And I just want like five different things probably. So let me do it. When it comes to stabilization, it has to be IBIS that works with every focal length. Panasonic IBIS doesn't work with the wide lenses. I think most IBIS doesn't work with wide. So we have to figure out a way around that. I don't know the physics behind the wideness and the warpy. So IBIS that works with any lens and also small crop digital IBIS that works to correct anything the IBIS forgot to do. Just Olympus does it right. We have all the features in all the different cameras, put it all in one. Maybe we need some type of spring head, ball head that bounces as you walk. It's an immediate bad idea. But stabilization is key and just having IBIS in your name, Sony, it doesn't count. It has to actually be glorious, like Panasonic and Olympus have achieved already. Audio is much more important than video, so don't skimp on that preamp. It has to be glorious. I don't care how big it is. It better be small. And it should sound amazing, and we should be able to lower the dB by 20. In the Panasonic, you can only go minus 12, and still a lot of mics clip. It's too hot, so why aren't you giving me the option to lower the volume? Same with the little Sony, you can't even lower it at all. It's too hot, it's too hot. And as a bonus, I wouldn't mind if we could tweak some things like EQ and the voice and noise reduction. I don't know that that's possible, but it would be nice to have it in so I don't have to edit the audio after. Some compression, stuff like that, a limiter that actually works like the Mix Pre 3 does. The camera has to have slow motion. We've already seen that we can do 1080p at 240 frames per second. So that has to be in there with autofocus and audio. It's, I demand it. And we should have higher ones like 480p in a lower resolution, 720p. And even higher, 960p. The little Sony does it. No, you can't do that. Come on. Ideally, there would be no crop either. I'm looking at you, Fuji, with your 1.29 crop. 
you're now a tiny micro bitch. In fact, my micro bitch on his 240 frames per second turns into a one incher if he was a foot. So that's not acceptable. Custom buttons everywhere on the front for us. This is a YouTuber's camera here. There should be five of them down on the side here, maybe a couple here. There's nothing worse than diving into a frigid cold menu system of the sea. Just let me touch a button, a couple buttons. The GH5S does pretty much everything I need, but I could use some more buttons. There's one on the front, I love that. And we should have an unlimited recording time, Mr. EOSR, that decided to die just now. And now we're on the glorious Panasonic GH5S to finish the show. I want super long battery life and obviously the ability to change batteries, unlike the Osmo Pocket. I can't believe how many people suggest that stupid camera to me, that stupid pocket. It has no mic jack, only a third party one that falls apart and sounds like shit and the battery just stays in there to die. I would prefer it if there was a side door. I'm tired of reaching underneath. Especially Panasonic has the dumbest flap switch. You never know which direction it is. To this day, I've done it a hundred times and I never remember which way. Is it this way or is it to the left? It's a swaying hinge, a fringy witch. It should be just a little out down. When it comes to color science, just make me look somewhat healthy, like I'm not dying of a liver disease, or that I don't drink paint thinner. I've done it. It's fine. Come on. The best I've seen might be Samsung. Samsung and Fuji are right there. Canon might be next. Panasonic. Sometimes they flip. I don't know how to do it. Just do it. Idle cam looks pretty good when it's exposed, right? GoPro is the worst I've ever seen. Mars mode. Just get skin to look nice and pleasing highlight dignity. So dynamic range and color science mixed into a Franken witch that will lick you. How come I said witch so many times? Does that mean there's one right next to me? Not today. Now here's some random shit that doesn't fit anywhere that needs to be in this camera. We should be able to rename the custom modes, not C1, C2, I forget. I have C1 right here is locked on focus. C3 is autofocus. I think C2 was slow motion, but then there's the C32, C33. I don't know what those do. I don't remember. I don't use them often enough. They should be labeled slow-mo, no focus, auto love hand massage. When it comes to the codec, I want high megabits, but I don't know how important that is. Like this camera looks glorious and it's like 24 megabits per second. It's terrible. And then the idle cam is only 60, but it looks much worse because it's 4K. It doesn't look right. That needs to be up towards 150 at least. I don't want insanity mode where it's 400 megabits per second and the file sizes are too big and my computer can't read it but we shouldn't see trees artifacting and moving within themselves, ghosting shit. Just have everything right. That's not the word. And something easy to edit, like the GoPro has the worst codecs ever. Like they're actually hard to edit. Whereas the GH5S, even the higher megabit rates are easy. Canon's pretty easy. I struggled a bit with the Sony. Fuji also a little bit of a struggle. So work on that friendly things, not ProRes, because you'd have to pay a patent and that would raise the cost of my camera. How dare you? And last thing, just don't forget the fun factor. This is a fun video camera. There should be modes like the old timey stuff with that black line wiggling and like the 1800s mode, like the first camera ever. It should be weird. And give me some Hollywood looks in there, teal and orange and whatever other darkness joker look. Have movie modes. God, this movie, Interstellar, the greatest movie of our time. It is. You can't argue it. It's the best. Because Matthew McConaughey is the greatest actor of our time. You didn't even know that. Till now. We all know it. Am I overexposed as F? More exposed than I was when I revealed that Matthew McConaughey was the greatest. Oh. There we are. I want miniature mode in there. I have it in here. But it works best when you're really high up on like the 30th floor of a building and you're looking down and then it, uh, they look miniature. It's like a miniature city. I love that. I want giant mode too. Where giants, everyone looks like a giant. How do you do that? 
do it. I think that's about it. I probably missed some key integral features in there, but that's basically it. That's what we're waiting for and it doesn't exist. Kind of does in the Fuji X-T4, but it needs some tweaking. We'll see with some firmware updates and their lenses. Maybe that Fringer, that Fringer X Adapter Pro 2, that's not what it's called. With the Canon glass, maybe you might have something there. Then it's heavier, you're heavy, going to diet. So let me know down below any features I might have missed. And if you agree, this is the perfect camera, who will make it? That waits to be seen. Fuji has the advantage because they have Eterna. And you wait till the Fuji action cam video. I want that so bad, more than anything more than success or health. Just give me a Fuji action cam and some terrible disease. I'll be happy. I'll be real happy. <laughs> All right, we're done. Thanks for buying a camera conspiracy t-shirt and other stuff down below. Amazon store, you could shop there. It's down there. Stuff I recommend is down there. Don't ask, what tripod is that? It's in the store. It's already there. No need to waste our time here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Subscribe for more videos and we'll see you in the next